Okay, today I'm gonna show how to get Metroid Prime remastered via a Switch emulator on the Steam Deck up and running. Um, it'll be a good idea to already have uh, the Emu Deck set up because that kind of makes the emulator installation extremely easy. I'll drop a link in the, the video description showing how to install that. Um, once you have Emu Deck up and running, um, this tutorial will be very, very easy for you. Um, so when you boot up your, your Steam Deck, go ahead and hit the Steam button. And we want to go all the way down to Power and switch to Desktop. This is kind of what we'll be doing the most of the work in. And once we load up uh, Emu Deck, it'll kind of take care of the integration for the Steam user interface for us. Um, something that I personally like to do is I like to have all my emulators here on the desktop to make them very easy to access. Um, if you don't know where the Yuzu emulator is, you can go ahead and search for it. Um, you can press the Steam and X button to open up the keyboard. Just type Yuzu drag it and drop it to the desktop to make it easy to access because if you're gonna be messing around with it a lot to find the best settings, it'll be a good idea to just have it right here to access at any time. Um, I also recommend having Ky Cairo Utilities installed. It boosts performance immensely across the board on pretty much everything. Um, kind of just optimizes the Steam Deck overall um, which if you're going to be using a lot of emulators and things like that, it'll be very, very helpful to have. Um, so on Yuzu, I like to, when I'm opening up games or anything like that, you can go ahead and open it up. Um, and it shows you right here where you will be putting the ROMs in. Um, so this Dolphin File Explorer is where we can go. To hunt it down and if you have no idea where this is basically once you open up dolphin you'll see something on the left side called home from there you will look for emulation from there you look for ROMs and when you set up emu deck uh, all this all these folders will be created for you it, this will be where you put all your ROMs in for all your games that way emu deck can just automatically configure everything for you you want to hunt down this folder called switch. Uh, and here is where you will put your NSP, XCI file, anything that's a switch game. This is where you'll put it. The same applies to all the other emulators as well. When you have all these games in here, um, when you open up uh, Yuzu here, you will find that all these games are automatically recognized because Emudeck configures all the emulators to look for these folders in specific. Um, if they're not here, you can redirect the emulator to look in a different pathway if you have it set in a different location. If you're using an SD card, you can also configure it to look in multiple different folders. Um, that way, you, if you have something on the internal as well as an SD card, it, it can look for both in both places and access both at the same time to make things a lot easier if you have a buttload here. Um, once you have the game thrown in this folder, you'll see it right here. Um, and you can do this for a lot of other games. Um, but basically, uh, with your left click, basically the L2 button, um, you'll left click essentially or right click um, technically. Um, if you're used to Windows, and you will go down here to Properties. Um, for Metroid Prime um, Remastered, it's um, it's kind of an easy game for Yuzu to emulate. It doesn't struggle a whole lot running it, which is really good, uh, considering this is a little brand new. Um, you want to make sure that Vulcan is set up. And then you want to make sure that this resolution here for starters is, is set to one times um, just to get kind of like a, a starting point. And then it, you can go up as needed or down as needed. Um, this AMD Fidelity FX Super Resolution should be already turned on by default. Um, if it's not, you can adjust it how you like. Um, and then you can mess with the anti-sopteric filtering if you want to have textures look prettier for a longer distance. Um, that's the per game configuration. You can go here to configure 
And right here, you can go to the graphics section and you can change uh, the settings across the board. Um, now across the board, I like to have things on 1.5 uh, resolution. I noticed for a majority of the games that seems to be the most compatible and the most good looking while still being able to have some decent frame rates, some decent resolution and some decent battery life. That seems to be the sweet spot. It says experimental. I haven't had many problems with it, but every game is going to act a little bit different. Um, now the Steam Deck in and of itself uses a 16 by 10 uh, aspect ratio, which is very weird and not all things support it. However, you want to go ahead and click for 16 by 10. That'll make sure that your game is as big as it can be and it uses up the full Steam, uh, Steam Deck display. If it's 16 by 9, you might have these like little black borders, which, uh, you know, it kind of are annoying. Um, it's not that imp important. It hasn't caused any graphical issues or any any issues that I've experienced in ma a majority of the games that I've played. You want to leave this setting on Vulcan. You want to leave a lot of things pretty much untouched. Um, the biggest thing is 416 by 9 and at least have this on uh, 1 times, which is 720 times 1080p. Um, when you, ha when you're running the emulator to tell it in docked mode, it will essentially run in basically 1080p. Um, and you can set the anti softer filtering to 16. I've noticed that this is pretty good and you want to basically mock these settings that I have right here. Um, I'll try to get a little closer. I don't have a dock to hook this thing into, but essentially use VSync is on. Use asynchronous shader building on, use fast GPU time on, and use Vulkan pipeline cache on. And then anti optic filtering doesn't affect things a lot of the time. If you experience issues, just set it back to default. Um, and then most of these issues you can just leave just like this. Um, most things you don't really have to play around with a whole lot. Um, and now I'm trying to remember where oh and you want to make sure that this right here under general tab in the user emulator is uh extended memory layout this will basically up the emulation emulated uh switch specs and since the steam is the steam deck is more than capable of handling that this can improve performance across the board there's been very few games that don't like this turned on super mario odyssey is one of them um, it doesn't seem to mind it anymore, but if you ever have problems with uh, any type of game and you have this on, try turning it off, then running it um, back on. Hotkeys, you can leave for the most part. So the Steam Deck will take care of that for you. Um, and you want to pretty much just mock all these, these settings for the most part. Most of them you don't have to touch uh, at all. Most of these settings you can pretty much leave alone other than the ones that I've mentioned. Um, other than that, there, I'm trying to f remember where the docked mode thing was. Let's see. I think it's turned on by default, but you want to make sure that this right here is uh, turned on too, just because since the Steam Deck has a, a better CPU, then the the switch it will utilize that stuff better than the switch can utilize itself basically you're telling you're basically creating a switch 2.0 now that you have those settings across the board you can configure each one i have super mario odyssey running at uh like one times resolution um just because it tends to have like some extremely demanding uh features for the the steam deck the steam deck does is doesn't play well with it a whole lot um most other games seem to not really care for the most part um and then you can go back here and kind of play around with the settings um this right here is just kind of general um the, the game runs really well at these uh settings right here with like no issues nine times out of ten um, you can up the resolution and you can up certain things if you if you feel like it. Uh, when you change the settings in the previous section, it'll just kind of take whatever those settings are. 
Um, as far as setting up the Yuzu emulator, you will have to initialize the keys um, to find where that folder is because it is kind of a pain in the ass if you don't know how to navigate the the, the Windows or the, the Linux-based system that the Steam Deck is running off of. It's familiar to Windows, but different than Windows. If you go over here to fi File, um, you can click this Open Yuzu folder under File. And this will basically pull up the hub um, of the what's supposed to be the root of this uh, the switch. Um, for your keys, you're going to want to go here. And I'll drop a these files into, uh, into the link some way, somehow. But basically, you will open up this folder in Yuzu and you drag and drop these, these files in here. Um, and then you close Yuzu, reopen Yuzu, and it will be like, hey, cool, you're good, and the games will be fine. Um, you can create these manually if you have a custom firmware switch, but it's kind of a pain in the butt to do, so it's it's best just to rip them, rip them off the internet, um, especially if you already have everything. Um, now, when you have the games... In the respected folders, which uh, just circling back to that real quick, it will be uh, home, deck, emulation, ROM switch. Once you have all your games set in there, um, you'll go ahead and open up the Steam ROM manager. Um, and let's see, once you open this up, there'll be something on the top left. Um, once you follow that tutorial uh, for setting up the the Steam Emu Deck stuff, this this when you add any type of new game, you'll have to do this. But it's honestly not a pain in the ass at all. Once you add, drag and drop a game into the folder, you configure it how you like. You go to Preview here. You click Generate App List. The Steam ROM Manager will look in in that ROM folder that you drag and drop things into, and you can go scroll down here. And you'll see all the things that are added in. You'll have all these different stuff, all the emulators. And then, of course, you'll have your games. Um, so for Metroid Prime here, I personally like having the little, the little, you know, the little switch icon on the left. Kind of makes it look like the game box art a little bit. Um, but you can go through all these pictures. And most, it's Nintendo, so they're going to remove some pictures that are uploaded. But you can have basically any custom custom artwork that's available selected you just go through the numbers but i like this one right here so that's the one i'll go with and you can do this for, through all your games um i haven't had any problems with any of these you just click these arrows select whatever thing you want um and you will hit save app list at the bottom once you do have whatever picture that you want you'll hit save app list it'll say done adding removing entries You'll go ahead and exit out of this and you will click return to gaming mode. And basically once it loads back up, um, you should have it somewhere in your collections. Once it loads. If you have a lock screen, put it in. And then I just played it on my lunch break today, so it's gonna show up right there. Um, if you don't see your games immediately, don't freak out because recent games showed what you've actually like opened recently. So hit your Steam button, go to library. Then once you're you're in here, go all the way over to collections. Um, and you'll see like all these things that you have. Um, I've named a lot of my folders very stupid things, but you're going to be looking for installed locally. Um, this right here shows all the things you have downloaded as well as all the things that the Emu Deck has set up for you. Um, so if you've had like all those Zelda games, retro games, they're all right here. They got these pretty little pictures that kind of make them feel welcomed in the, the Steam user interface. Um, so if it's Wii U, PS2, 3DS, or a Steam game, installed locally shows everything you have ready to go, including the emulators. Um, 
but Metroid Prime is the one we're focusing on today. So we'll go ahead and click that and we should just hit play. Now, Emu Deck makes things super, super, super easy to where once you have everything set up on desktop mode, it's just a one click press and play uh, on the Steam user interface. And then I'm going to go ahead and because everybody seems to like when people turn these on. So I'll go ahead and show you guys some things. Now, just keep in mind, I'm running this at the experimental 1.5 resolution as well as with anti-sopteric filtering on 16. Um, and of course, having things run at 60 FPS, which the game does by default, but when you're, when you're running the Yuzu emulator, even though the Steam Deck is portable, Yuzu will run games as if they were in docked mode. So the games that run in docked mode at 60 FPS will run 60 FPS instead of their handheld 30 FPS modes which honestly is the biggest downside of having a switch. Um, so I'm a, I've been, I haven't played it a whole lot, been getting into it recently. Again, after haven't playing it since the GameCube era. Um, and my, my camera just blows ass. So I can't exactly show off the detail that it puts out. But when you're running the internal resolution higher than uh, 800p, you're not going to notice a, an extremely massive uh, difference. But you'll notice like when you're looking at things, things will be a lot more crisp and a lot better uh, looking, especially like when you're looking at textures, um, anything, anything with any type of detail is going to look a lot better. Um, even, even if the, the screen resolution isn't the biggest thing in the world, um, I feel like it makes things look pretty or just as good looking, um, as I would play it on like a, like a decently powerful PC without having a massive compromise to the battery life or performance or anything like that. Um, when you're running it at these specific settings, you'll have like a slight micro stutter, um, the micro stutter is quite literally a micro stutter. Um, it personally, it hasn't really affected gameplay at all. It doesn't slow down the game at all. Like it just has a very slight hiccup. Um, the reason why these micro stutters happen, if you do experience them often is when it, the way Metroid prime works is anytime you shoot a door it right then and there is loading the next level which yuzu by default will have just a slight struggle with um just because the way the game was made is it was made for you know an actual like an actual switch not necessarily an emulator so you'll have a little bit of a hiccup but as you can see here even the transition is pretty like minimal like it's very, it's very small. Like I'm still moving forward. It's like a slight like frame dip, like one slight frame dip, which isn't in my personal opinion that bad considering that the game looks fantastic. Textures look fantastic. It's running at like 60 FPS 99% of the time. Like honestly, this right here in my personal opinion is the highest quality with the most minimal compromise humanly possible. Um, however, once an update, more updates come out for Metroid Prime, of course, and performance over time will improve. Um, if you have power tools, you can mess with those as well. Um, if you have these installed, um, power tools you can turn on through the Emu Deck. And from there, you can mess with all sorts of different settings. Uh, you can limit the frame rate if you want to get a far better, what you call it, far better like battery life. You'll you'll have like a massive in, uh, what's it called, a massive input delay when you run at 30 FPS. Um, I don't necessarily recommend it in any way, shape, or form, but. If you don't really care about 60 FPS, it'll that'll increase your battery life um, a lot. Um, I leave most of these settings pretty much just left alone. Um, but other than that, 
these are the settings that I use for Metroid Prime. That's how I've set my uh, all my Yuzu games up for the, the Switch emulator. I've had the, the best experience with the settings that I have here. I've played around with all of them for maybe like two hours. When I first got my Steam Deck, I would play for like five minutes, see how it, things would run. Um, anything lower doesn't really matter. Uh, anything higher is a little bit overkill, but for the most part, these are kind of like the sweet spot settings that I have, have discovered that I feel like are pretty universal. Having Cairo utilities installed is as a must, um, especially if we're going to be running any kind of decently taxing emulator. Um, but other than that, the performance on all the other Yuzu games are pretty good as well too um so if you you're playing it and if your performance isn't as great as you want it to be or anything's bothering you anytime you need to change your settings you can just switch back to desktop mode and once you have yuzu on your deck you just open that bad boy up and you can edit the settings to be however you want them to be. Um, you can up it, you can lower it, you can down it, you can play around with it. Um, Cause anytime it comes to emulators, you'll be wanting to tinker with it just a little bit. Um, Steam decks are pretty universal um, across the board with what their hardware is. So usually you can just kind of just follow along and not have any like massive uh, problems. Um, another thing is if you don't want to run at a higher resolution, you can use an anti-aliasing method instead uh, to see what your performance works, um, to see if that gives you any, any massive differences or anything like that. Um, but other than that, you just right left, tech, left click on the game and you can hit properties and adjust it how you need. Um, to get the performance or resolution or however you want to your liking. Um, usually you can't go wrong with one times. It still looks pretty good. Um, you're not really losing out on a whole lot. Um, and then other games you can drop them down or lower them or customize them individually to have their own settings in case one runs better with a certain settings or one doesn't really care or if you have like like a Pokemon game especially the top down ones you can usually crank those up to whatever the hell you want to and they usually won't really care too much um, but usually one times or 1.5 uh, has been the most beneficial if you have it docked um, or plugged into a battery source, you can crank it up to 2K or anything that you want to get a little bit better out of it. But you just close out of that, return to gaming mode, um, play the game again, and just kind of play around with it till you find your best settings. I hope that this video helps. If you have any questions, drop them in the comments. Uh, I'll be happy to answer them. Um, and other than that, if you if you've done the Steam Deck, Emu Deck tutorial already, setting up games is honestly a breeze.